All right, my friends. It's a Craftsman, but it's mostly a Quantum, I believe, MTD frame and chassis. About four years ago, this uh, lady in the community brought this to me because the back wheels wouldn't turn and you could hardly push it. So I believe that at that time I just took the gears off the axles so that the back tires would spin just like the front tires. And uh, she's been pushing it around her yard ever since. And now this week she's just bought a new Craftsman and she wants me to keep this one. And I don't want to keep that chassis, it's just a beast. So I'm thinking of taking the motor off of it and putting it on one of my other decks. For the first time in years I've got about five decks out there, but it's not as easy as you think. It's all about shaft length, engine position, all that stuff. So I'll turn you off, and we're going to get this guy up in the air, and we're going to just take out a few things from underneath first. Okay, so there's one bolt to hold this cover on right there. And then two five sixteenths, if you can believe it, that's all they are. One is there, and one is there. That's it. And this just pulls away. Like that. So we're gonna we're gonna take this apart. Look at that big boy blade adapter. So I've taken one bolt out of the engine so far. No, nope, that's not it. Come on, Bruce. Use your brain. One bolt out so far, and it's a half an inch. And I'm just gonna. Uh, I think there's only one cable holding it on, and the rewind. So we'll uh, undo the the rope on that. And we're gonna disconnect that lever. like that. Okay, there should be two more to go. I, I think I'm going to put this one back in because I'd rather hang it from the top. Right? I'm going to pop that one off. Oh, and we have to disconnect the brake cable. So we're gonna, now we're going to give a plug to BSS Small Engines, Brandon. He makes these little cables. And you have to come and watch this. It's a necessity. Okay, right there. Look down, way down. And we take this little guy, we put it over the cable, and we just push. Two of So that's it for that. Now, back to your position watching me Take out the last two bolts. And then, we're just going to take out this last one. Just like that, we removed the motor. Oops, up there like that. So now let's put it up here. I got my quantum motor. Okay, this is the uh, engine I'm going to put on the, the new deck. It's a 2010 Quantum 190cc, good size engine. And uh, I've wiped it down, cleaned it up as much as I can without power washing it. It still has the old oil in it and the old air filter. Whoops! I'm sorry. So anyway, it still has the old oil in it and the old oil, the air, ha! <laughs> the old air filter. It's got a little bit of gas in it so we can test it when we're done. And I'll be right back. And this is the car, this is the deck it's going to go on. A very nice deck. It's also a Craftsman. MTD. It has, this one has an electric start right there, but that's coming off. And this engine has a blown rod. The blade goes around and the engine doesn't. You imagine that. So we're going to put that on the lift next 
and remove all of the necessary stuff before we uh, transfer the new engine, the new old engine, to this unit. Here we go. All right. Just lift you up a little bit. And so we're going to take the battery, the battery, and the uh, wiring for it up to the harness, get that all off of there. And then the off cable will be easy. And it should be just three bolts to take the engine out because I've already, this is not light, I've already taken the blade off. So I'll just, uh, Pardon me, but I'm just going to be moving around freely with my tools. So you can watch. Maybe we'll uh, do it. Loose. Let's try a 13. That's it. Once again, Brandon. Now we should be able to just pull that out of there now. Now, believe it or not, there's only three bolts. Okay, so we do the top one last. We'll bring you right over here. This might take a moment. Sometimes these are in really tight. Eh? Engine. 
And here it is. I wanted to just get another block of wood and show you something. All right, so we have a vice grip on the engine shaft and we've got a screwdriver down the hole. And I believe the engine turns this way. And the piston's not going up and down. There. <laughs> so that engine's toast. And I'm not going to fix it. Because it's a crap engine to start with. Oh, it looks cute and pretty and all that stuff. But I'm going to take everything off of it that I can. I don't have any of these carburetors. <clears throat> the rope pull will most likely... One moment, please. The rope pull is most likely going to look like a, cha a, ja a, a Honda. Yeah, that should come on. And it's got three holes. One, two, three. I'm not going to do the tear down on this one today. Well, I think you had a mouse in here. Alright. So what do I do with you now, my friend? Just put them up here on the bench. And we'll do a tear down after. Now I did quite a good job of cleaning the deck. So I can almost put the new one in. We're going to lift him up. Well, let's just clean this guy up a little bit. Eh? What's that saying? Let's just clean this happy little lawnmower deck up. So for, for, for reliability purposes, I like non-self-propelled mowers. I know some guys really like them, but even in my not young years, I still prefer them. Now there is a there's a square hole there, right there. Can you see that? So I am going to find a, just a carriage bolt to fill in that hole. All right, we'll just get this cable out of the way. I can't, that's ugly. Having a square hole like that right there, right there. So I'm gonna stick that on there. And I'm gonna just tilt this back and put this bolt in. Just because something looks better than nothing, right? That's where the battery container was held. So I'm just going to put that on there like that. And it's going to grab by its own squareness. I'm going to just turn her in. There. That's not going to get in the way of the blade. And it just looks like another assembly piece, doesn't it? Somebody will take that apart someday and say, what the heck did he put that on there for? But I'll leave a marking on this somewhere that uh, this is not the original motor. In fact, I might even pull the, pull the model date off because it'll have the engine on there. Alrighty. My friend's gonna go on there. Well, I hope. Just like that. Okay. No, oh, I don't like that. What was that on there for? Nothing. Well, I'm 
just going to flatten that with bulking air. Just so it doesn't cut somebody, right? That'll work. Alright. Now our three bolts. Alright. Let's put these uh, engine bolts in this guy. I gotta go easy. The first one anyway. holding there. Good. Make sure that's a half inch. Once I get one tightened up, then the, the world is my oyster. There. Very nice. Very, very good. Okay, let's go have a look at it. Hey, 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 let's just tie this back right now. Oh, look at that. It's perfect. I'm going to have to take this off of here, though. Uh, I've got two pairs of pliers that will straighten up. I don't need the clamp on here. I kept it on there, but I, sh I didn't need it. <laughs> Holy moly, baby. Just when you think they quit making stuff good. Hi, Carl. Now we have to use the blade that came with this deck, right? I got a couple problems still. I think this this cable is going to be way too long. But let's get the, the the blade off first. And set blade adapter and check the height of our blade, eh? This is the whole this is the whole job right here, right? Grass off the blade. Oh. on it too. I'll be right back. Alright, this is the big one. Uh, what size uh, bolt is that? That's a 5 8 
I'm going to put the blade adapter on. It's the same size. I measured it with my micrometer. The blade. I sharpened it and balanced it. I need a machine. Okay, let's get the big ratchet out. And get it as close to 40 foot pounds as I can. It's kind of an ambiguous, oh, that's good. Kind of an ambiguous measurement anyway. Well, that's it. So let's check here now. There's a half an inch to go there. Unplug the spark plug. And a half an inch to go there. She's good. It's actually leading here. A centimeter to a half an inch is what they say, right? Right on, baby. Now, the only other thing stopping us from using this machine is that this cable is way too long. Now I could cross it over and hook it up. But I just want to see what uh, what I got out in the, in the hoard here. Hang on. I'll be right back. Well, there it is. I'm just going to cut that tie wrap off of there. Now I this is just a little thing. But you should actually get a very, very sharp pair of pliers, cutting pliers, like micro shears, when you cut off a tie wrap. Now, come with me and I'll show you. I'll just turn this around. So do you see right there? Right here, can you see down there? Yes, you can. Okay, so some guys just cut these off willy-nilly like that. Right? That is a hazard. I know what, let's just focus in on that a little bit, right? That is a hazard. Uh, so the way it's supposed to be done is a nice sharp pair of snips and flush. So you can't get cut, right? And then even turn it in a little bit. Seems like a small thing. But I can tell you, I've had hundreds of cuts from those. And that's the thing in my trade that I came from. We went from string to attach everything, wax string, to tie wraps. And in the early days, you had an inspector come by and inspect your work. Right? There we go. Just pull it tight. You can pull it tight and then cut it off. That's not even a sharp snip, just as good as I like. There we go. So I think the lawnmower is ready to test you guys. So let me get you back out. Turn it around, again, the blade is on, it's within a centimeter of the edge of the uh, cutting surface, which is perfect. New engine, don't forget. And uh, the nice thing about these decks is the front, the blade actually comes before, right? So that's a beautiful thing. Are you ready? Get a clamp. for the first go. We're going to give this a little pull. Now this engine's been upside down, right side up, who knows what, so it's going to smoke a little. A 
Okay, I just drained the drained the fuel out of the tank, and it was pretty bad. Not pretty bad, just a, a little bit of water and some and some sawdust over the years, right? Flakes of stuff, chunks of beef. That's pretty normal. And I did the uh, cleaning of the bottom bowl jet. Now it might sputter again because I didn't have it on its side. Yeah. Oh no! Are we in? Are we on? running better and better the longer I run it. So uh, I'm just going to put an oil filter in and change the oil. Air filter in and change the oil. Okay, this engine's shot. I really haven't done anything but take the gas tank off, disconnect the gas line, and take the gas tank off. It was in the way of the uh, uh, the pull rope was in the way, that's all, right? So there we go. Uh, no, yeah, it goes on top of like that. Like that thing, right? So we'll just take that back off of there again. And now you're caught up. A couple of weird little hoses. This is much like the Tecumseh breather hose. And this guy came out of the tank and went into the carburetor. Must just be for sucking gas fumes. I'm kind of interested to see what's going on with this carburetor. I think, let's just make sure you watch it. Yep. So this looks like, it's a strange setup. It looks like a Tecumseh fuel system because the, uh, the, side, the side intake goes in like that. Much like a Tecumseh carburetor, right? Much like that. Even with the two little gumbies sticking up there. Let's have a look at the air filter. Ooh. It's going to be all right. Now, this governor is a little calm. Oh no, it is. Oh my gosh. It is a Tecumseh clone, except for the mufflers on the other side. I tell you, Wayne knows what he's doing, eh? Wayne Stephenson from EP Performance. So look at that, you guys. Uh, it goes on like that. Look at that throttle. 
And look at that throttle. Hmm. Absolutely amazing. I almost want to give him a call. I'm going to do that. Hang on. Okay, my friends, I just did this. Right? That's all the oil I got out of it. And then this little piece came out with it. So that explains that there's going to be more. You know it. At least it's not going to fill up my... Uh, my five gallon waste drum. <laughs> oh boy. All right, we're, we're almost there on this teardown, guys. Heads off, flywheels off, push rods out. The interesting thing is going to be when we turn it upside down and pull off the sump and all the parts come flying out. But I want to do something fun. You know me. Now that we got that dipstick out of there, right, there's going to be some more oil come out. And let's see if we can get some parts. We got one part out of the other one. We we'll use this. This is my oil one here. So let's just see what we get. Oh, I don't want to get those out of there. Magnet! Nothing. Okay. I'm going to stop for today. It's way too much hoofer off for an engine, isn't it? For a lawn mower. Let's put this over here. Alright, well, I'm kind of disappointed there was nothing in there. That's good, I'll just dump it out. So, we will continue with the teardown tomorrow. Okay, you guys, I'm going to get smart. I'm going to take this engine, not much left to it. I'm going to put it upside down in this pail so my benches don't get all icky poo poo. And it looks like there's, oh my gosh, it looks like there's quite a few. Holy, I got to show you that. Look at, is that all? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven bolts holding that on there? I guess there is. And they'd be all 10 mil now, I think. Let me just grab a, a 10 mil weapon. Can you see me okay from there? I'm a little bit cockeyed. Okay. Yeah, all 10 of those have to come off. Let's go. crisscross pattern because it's not going back together. That's going to have quite a gasket on it, eh? <laughs> Ten holes in the gasket. Like it, if it, except for the quality of the engine itself. It's, it, I, I like I like the build quality of it. Oh. 
See, it's already spewing oil out, eh? Okay, I made it all the way around. Brass hammer. Although being as it's a part, a part out, I could use a regular ball peen hammer on this. So now I'll just have a little interesting look at the side here. There it goes. Here it is. There's no rat, there's no, uh, holy smokes, there's no. All right, let's look at this. Let's wipe our hands. Oh, we need a new thick pillow. Always need something, eh? Hey? Look, I just didn't want to get oil on the tripod. There you go. Look at that. There's no. End cap on that, on that, broke right off. There it is. There. So now that you saw that, there is stuff floating around in there. There it is. There's the end cap. One of them. Now, there should be a timing mark. I tell you, this thing's almost exactly like an old Tecumseh. Wayne was right. Oh, it even jumped. It even jumped the... There it is. Oh, no way. I'm going to look this up to see if this is the right part. This little cam opens the exhaust valve. Right there, and then when the engine speeds up, it goes off to the side. Can I pull that crank out of there? I think I can. No. Let's just touch the... get the piston to move up a little bit. There. I should be able to pull that crankshaft out of there. Here's the other end of the rat, or the... Rod cap. There's parts all over this this engine. Let's get that piston out of there. That'll be interesting. There it is. Been heated. I'm just going to take the top ring off and see how much ring gap there is in the cylinder if it comes off. Okay, it's probably looks like 15 thousandths of an inch on the ring gap there. Not worried about it. I guess I could show you that. Right. There, the gap between the when the ring goes around the two the two different spots should be fairly close together. There we go. That's a ring gap right there. Okay, that's it. A few more things to remove, and we got a little aluminum block. Look at the stuff in there. Uh. And I'm just going to lay 
lay these in here. Well, that gasket survived, maybe. Uh, I'll never use this gasket. Right, let's just turn them like that. Turn them like that. Just on their sides so that they don't uh, lay flat in the oil. And we'll just let that drain for a couple hours. There. Good. Done. Part out. Complete. So that's what kills it. See you later. Okay, here's the broken pieces. That's part of the connecting rod. More. Miscellaneous chunks flying around in there at the speed of sound. There. So this video I think is complete. Thanks for watching this one with me, guys. It's fun to do a teardown once in a while, isn't it?